Welcome to the Modemulator GUI video. The topics covered in this video are what is the Modemulator GUI application and what are the requirements for using it. Then we'll take a tour of the configuration dashboard, a tour of the phone directory, and a tour of the terminal. So what is the Modemulator GUI application? The Modemulator GUI application is software that runs on a computer having a Windows operating system to make configuring and updating modemulators faster and easier than using the modemulator's native command line interface by providing a single screen view of all modemulator settings, banners, and passwords. The modemulator is a serial interface device and the GUI communicates with the modemulator over that serial interface. A read unit operation reads the modemulator's current settings banners, passwords, and dialing directory into the GUI for viewing and editing. And a write unit operation sends the settings, banners, passwords, and phone directory from the GUI into the modemulator. When the target modemulator is remote, the GUI can be used to dial the target modemulator from a local modemulator via the cellular network. Then, a read unit operation reads the remote modemulator's current settings, banners, passwords, and dialing directory into the GUI for viewing and editing. And a write unit operation sends the settings, banners, passwords, and phone directory from the GUI into the remote modemulator. The requirements for using the modemulator GUI application are a target modemulator and a computer that has the GUI application installed. Follow the installation instructions in the Modemulator GUI user guide available at these USR support pages. A standard serial port on the computer and a short serial cable are also required. Or, as an alternative to a serial port and a serial cable, use a USB port and a USB to serial cable. If the target modemulator is remote, an additional local modemulator is also required, along with peer-to-peer -peer cellular service for both modemulators. Upon startup, the GUI displays the configuration dashboard screen. At startup, the GUI will normally contain factory settings and banners, and no passwords. The serial settings, the logging button, and the terminal's macro screens will be remembered from the previous GUI session. Later in this video, I'll explain how a customized startup can be recalled from a user-defined configuration file. Helpful tool tips appear when the pointer hovers over any button or text box. This area of the configuration dashboard shows all the settings, banners, and passwords that can be read from or written to a mode emulator. There are checkboxes for parameters that can be either on or off. There are drop-down lists for parameters that have a range of settings. There are text boxes to enter and display 10 modemulator passwords, and check boxes to grant administrator privileges to the nine user passwords, and a button to clear all passwords and privileges. Remember that any changes affect only the GUI contents, not the actual modemulator, until a write unit operation sends the GUI contents to the modemulator. There are text boxes to enter the caller ID string, the custom connect message, the login banner, the listener port number, and the security banner. A character counter is provided that is helpful when making entries into any text box. After a read unit operation is executed, the modemulator's current firmware version number and serial number are displayed here along with the modemulator's non-volatile serial port settings, which is useful when checking that a remote modemulator's serial port is set correctly for communicating with the remote equipment. The next group of controls contains buttons that load certain factory presets into the GUI. The No Flow button sets the parameters like a modemulator ampersand F0 command does. The Hardware Flow button sets the parameters like a modemulator ampersand F1 command does. The Software Flow button sets the parameters like a modemulator ampersand F2 command does. 
The Listener Port button enters the default value 8888 into the GUI's Listener Port text box. And the Login Banner button enters the default Login Banner into the GUI's Login Banner text box. This button opens the GUI phone directory. Later in this video, we'll take a tour of the phone directory. This button turns logging on or off. When logging is on, a log file will collect all GUI activity for tracking or troubleshooting. An exit button is provided for closing the Modemulator GUI application. Do not use the X icon at the top right corner of the window or the Alt F4 keyboard shortcut to close the application. The next group of controls contains indicators that show the state of the computer's serial port and RS-232 control signals. There are drop-down lists for selecting the COM port, the baud rate of the computer's serial port, and the type of parity bit. This button executes a read unit operation, which reads the modemulator's current settings, banners, passwords, and dialing directory into the GUI for viewing and editing. This button executes a write unit operation, which sends the settings, banners, passwords, and phone directory from the GUI into the mode emulator. This button provides a simple means of updating a mode emulator's firmware. Click it and a confirmation prompt will appear. And when the Yes button is clicked, a list of firmware files in the GUI's hex subdirectory will appear. Simply point to and click the desired firmware file. The GUI will then automatically replace the mode emulator's current firmware with the firmware file. This button switches the GUI into terminal mode. Later in this video, we'll take a tour of terminal mode. Use this group of controls when managing a remote mode emulator. First, enter the phone number or IP address of the remote mode emulator into this text box. If the remote mode emulator has password prompting or dialback security enabled, enter a valid password into this text box. If the remote mode emulator has dialback security enabled, enter the phone number of the local mode emulator into this text box. Then, click the dial button. The GUI will use the local mode emulator to connect with the remote mode emulator over the cellular network. Then you can use the GUI to read or write the remote mode emulator's configuration. Tick this checkbox to set the remote mode emulator's serial port to match the GUI's serial settings. The entire GUI contents can be saved to or recalled from files on the computer which is useful for creating one or more standard mode emulator configurations or for archiving custom mode emulator configurations. Use this group of controls to read or write the configuration files. Access to each file is password protected and the mode emulator passwords stored in the configuration files are encrypted to prevent unauthorized access to the mode emulators. The first time either the Read File or Write File button is clicked after GUI startup, a PIN entry box will pop up. Enter a four-digit PIN that will be used to encrypt the configuration files. The same PIN will be required to decrypt the configuration files. The PIN is requested only once until the GUI closes. Each file may also have a password. If a password is needed, enter it into the Password text box and click Yes. If the Read File button was clicked, a list of configuration files in the GUI's DAT subdirectory will appear. Simply point to and click the desired configuration file to read the stored settings, banners, passwords, and the phone directory into the GUI, along with the GUI's serial settings, the logging button, and the terminal's macro keys. If the Write File button was clicked, a text box will appear. Enter a file name to be used for saving a configuration file. Choose a file name that is not a Windows reserved word. Press Enter on the keyboard to finish. Two files will be written, a .dat file into the .dat subdirectory and a .csv file into the .csv subdirectory. 
All settings, banners, passwords, and the GUI phone directory will be saved, along with the GUI's serial settings, the logging button, and the terminal's macro strings. If a configuration file named default is saved, the GUI will automatically recall that file at every startup. This is useful for making the GUI always start up with predetermined contents, regardless of the settings of the last session. Now we'll take a tour of the GUI phone directory. Click the Display Phone Directory button to open a window containing the GUI phone directory. This area contains the phone directory entries. Each entry must have a phone number, a port number, and an IP address. This example shows two entries, but the phone directory can hold up to 7,200 entries. This button sorts the entries by ascending or descending phone numbers. This button sorts the entries by ascending or descending IP addresses. New entries are typed into the first row and entered into the directory by clicking the Add button. An individual entry can be erased by clicking the Delete button. Simply click anywhere in the row that you want to erase. The Delete button will move to that row. Then click the Delete button to erase the entry. Remember that any changes affect only the GUI contents, not the actual mode emulator, until a write unit operation sends the GUI contents to the mode emulator. In this group of controls is a button that erases all entries in the GUI phone directory. A prompt will appear asking you to confirm the operation. The GUI can import a CSV file into the phone directory. Click this button to open a list of CSV files in the GUI's CSV subdirectory. These files are created by the GUI during a write file operation, or can be created offline with a spreadsheet application or any text editor. See the Mode Emulator GUI user guide for CSV file specifications. Simply point to and click the desired CSV file to import it. A character counter is provided that is helpful when typing entries into the phone directory. A close window button is provided for closing the phone directory window. Do not use the X icon at the top right corner of the window or the Alt F4 keyboard shortcut to close the phone directory window. Now we'll take a tour of the terminal. Click the terminal button to switch the GUI into terminal mode. This area is a text terminal connected to the computer's COM port. The terminal is useful for communicating directly to a mode emulator's command line interface without running a separate terminal application. This group of controls contains indicators that show the state of the computer's serial port and RS-232 control signals. These drop-down lists show the current serial settings that were selected in the configuration dashboard but cannot be changed while in terminal mode. And these buttons are also disabled in terminal mode. Click the terminal button to close the terminal and return to the configuration dashboard. While in terminal mode, eight special function buttons are provided, corresponding to the function keys on the keyboard. Click the F1 button or press F1 on the keyboard to clear the terminal screen. Click the F2 button or press F2 on the keyboard to toggle the DTR signal on the computer's serial ports. Click the F3 button or press F3 on the keyboard to send a file from the computer's serial ports. The standard Windows Open File box will pop up. Navigate to the file and click Open to send it. Five programmable macro buttons are also provided. To program a macro, shift-click the button or shift-press the function key. A text box will appear. Enter the macro string into the text box, then click the button or press the function key again to close the text box. Now click the macro button or press the function key to send the macro string from the computer's serial ports. Macros are useful for manually sending common repetitive commands. The controls in this group are disabled in terminal mode, 
except for the exit button, which can be used for closing the application from terminal mode. And these groups of controls are also disabled in terminal mode. In this video, I've given an, an overview of the Modemulator GUI application. More details can be found in the Modemulator GUI user guide. For more details about any Modemulator commands, see the command reference chapter in the Modemulator user guide. Both guides can be downloaded from these USR support pages. I hope this video was helpful for understanding the Modemulator GUI application. Thank you for watching and thank you for choosing USR.